Soviet and Russian figure skating coach Tatyana Tarasova spoke out about the possible consequences of the decision by the International Olympic Committee and its head, Thomas Bach, on the conditions of Russian athletes' admission to international tournaments. In particular, the prohibition to perform for those athletes who have contracts with the armed forces. A number of figure skaters also fall under this number. Naturally, people will start thinking about leaving. In CSKA, not only Alexandra Trusova, but also our Russian champion Mark Kondratyuk. The management of the army men need to think about what to do, so that athletes don't start leaving them, Sport Express quotes Tarasova. Tatyana Tarasova believes that Russians need to go to the competition in a neutral status. As for the flag and the anthem, it seems to me that we should be allowed to go somewhere first, and then we will beat out some preferences for ourselves. Of course, we have to go to the competitions, even if we have a neutral status. In these questions we support and agree with Thomas Bach. He is expressing IOC's viewpoint, which is correct and logical. Why should other countries interfere and tell us whether we should take part or not? It's none of their business, Tarasova said. Alexander Samarin told how the relationship with Alexandra Trusova changed Mark Kondratyuk. Your communication with Mark Kondratyuk has not changed this year, has it become less? Well, he is in a relationship with Sasha Trusova now. Probably not much time for friends. We all have other things to do as we get older. When you're younger, you do more stuff. We don't have much time for anything. In the locker room, we can talk, have fun. On the ice, everyone is at work, and after the ice, everyone mind his own business. But I wouldn't say that Mark changed much after he started dating Sasha. I think it did him good. He has matured, said the skater. Thomas Bach reacted to the negative reactions to the IOC recommendations on the admission of Russians. Earlier, the IOC had recommended that Russians be admitted to international competitions in neutral status, but this does not apply to team sports, representatives of security agencies and those who supported combat operations. Today the IOC Executive Committee discussed reactions to the recommendations. We have taken them into account, including the negative ones. The IOC Executive Committee says, it is unfortunate that all governments that criticize the recommendations do not consider the double standard. We do not have any sanctions against other countries, which are 70 current conflicts in the world. It is even more unfortunate that they do not pay attention to the statements of UN human rights reporters. Government intervention has made the position of IOC members even more cohesive. Governments cannot decide which country's citizens can compete. That would be the end of world sport as we know it. The IOC members are very concerned about the politicization of sport and the attitude of governments, which want to hijack the right to organize tournaments in their countries and even in other countries, said the head of the IOC. Thomas Bach stated that athletes from Russia and Belarus would be tested separately for compliance with the anti-doping conditions for admission into competitions. Of course, we are concerned about the doping issue, we are constantly discussing it. As we spelled out in the recommendations, any neutral athletes from Russia and Belarus must comply with the necessary anti-doping conditions set by their federation. For each such athlete, we will check individually whether they have complied with them. It will not be enough for us to have general statistics on the number of tests. I should also add that international federations work with EDA and WADA and they have all the information they need to make decisions. The IOC can't take such decisions because we don't even have such information, who and how many people get tested. The national anti-doping agencies, EDA and WADA have it, noted Bach. German figure skater Ruben Blomert announced the end of his sports career. In the 2022-23 season Blomert competed in a pair with Elisa Efimova, who moved to Germany from the Russian national team. Efimova and Blomert placed 10th at the 2023 World Championships in Saitama. After my performance at this amazing World Championships, I decided to end my career as a figure skater. It's not an easy decision because I enjoyed my performance last week in Japan so much. 
I want to thank Alice for making it possible for us to get to the World Championships, because it hasn't been an easy season at all. We had a lot of ups and downs, and in my opinion, more downs than ups. In figure skating, I've always valued fun over results. I need to get joy out of what I'm doing in order to succeed. We have a different approach to how we want to do sports, and that's fine, but it still doesn't really help us in our daily lives. We don't talk much about the mental health of athletes, but I definitely haven't felt happy in recent weeks slash months. I know who I am and what I want to be. And I didn't recognize myself on the ice anymore, so I decided to make a change. Another big issue for next season is not having the kind of support from the Federation that I've had in years past. I would have to invest a lot of money in new choreography, hold training camps, and pay for all competition expenses. Opening a crowdfunding campaign to fund next season is not something that should be done at this point in my career. I'm very proud to be an Olympian, a Grand Prix medalist, fourth at the European Championships, and in the top 10 at the World Championships. However, I don't think people will understand why we have to ask for money at this level. It sounds pretty harsh, but that's the reality, and that's why I'm making the decision," Blomert wrote. Figure skater Elisa Yefimova said she has no plans to end her athletic career. Yefimova and Ruben Blomert competed for Germany in Paris skating. The partner announced the end of his career. In a nutshell, really, referring to the words in Ruben's post, all his best results, which he is proud of, were achieved together with me. I may have opened him up to the big sport in terms of the work he put in and overcoming himself. Turns out, he wasn't ready for that. That's my point, and professionals reading Ruben's post will know what I'm talking about. But on the other hand, it is good that he realized it now, and not just before the Olympics. As for me, I am not planning to finish. Several partners contacted me, and we will have auditions in the near future," said Efimova. Evgenia Medvedeva attended the knowledge lecture session and shared with participants how losing the Pyeongchang Olympics affected her. The topic, as you know, was the focus of her poignant program at the recent showcase tournament. She noted that everyone perceives silver or bronze differently depending on what they originally hoped for in a particular tournament. Some people go out and aim for average, 6th or 7th place, and they're in the prizes. And he stands there crying with happiness, wow, I'm third. And when you come out and get the podium, it's already happened, you can't escape it. Of course, if it upsets you, you can suffer, you can worry, it's human emotion, we have a right to it. The main thing is to accept and understand that nothing can be changed, said the game's vice champion. Evgenia said that's exactly what she had to do, accept the inevitable and look for the pluses in the situation. There are some painful moments when it hurts me, of course. It's my past, there's nothing I can do about it. I found in this silver the motivation to move forward and prove to myself that not only a medal and a person is built in society. There are so many paths you can take to develop, to become a better person, to become an example to yourself. So you can turn your worry about losing into motivation, Medvedeva said. She also said that there are useful situations in life when a person was a little bit lacking up to some great achievement. I want to note that sometimes I am not enough. That's when a little was not enough, in life it is painful, but very helpful. Something achieved, but no, not enough. Something is constantly missing. Maybe that's a good thing, concluded the two-time world champion.